give you the latest, the juiciest, and the hottest entertainment news. Pa local man po international. Yan ang hatid namin sa inyo kasi here's a countdown. You shouldn't miss the new normal. You can't resist. Come on, let's start with today's number 10. Would you believe it's a Wednesday? What? what? I thought it was a Tuesday. But anyway, well, here is our topic for number 10. The Hands Made Tale Season 5. The first look of it. Let's talk about that. Ding, ding, ding. The upcoming season of the hit series, The Handmaid's Tale, is about to take another viewing habit as it released two images to tease the fifth season. Guess what? Hindi ko pa napapanood yung first season. Ding, ding, ding. Pero para sa mga fans, eto na, according to Hulu, Elizabeth Moss's character June faces consequences killing Commander Waterford while redefining her identity and purpose. Elizabeth shared the news on her Instagram and said that the newest season will debut two episodes which she directed. She had been directing a few of the series episodes and that was during the fourth season. So the return will be on September on Hulu. Wow. But anyway, guys, if you want to convince me to watch it, let me know down in the comments below because we are on Facebook and YouTube as well. But we're going to talk about number nine. Finally, Paddington 3 has a director. Ding, ding, ding. Yep, it found the director it needed, and that's Dugo Wilson, who will be directing Paddington in Peru under Studio Canal and Heyday Films. Wilson is known for directing music videos and commercial, and this will be the theatrical feature debut of him. According to The Hollywood Reporter, he is taking the directorial job for former director Paul King, who directed the first two Paddingtons. And Paul is doing Wonka, the prequel of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Well, gusto, gusto natin yan. Prequel, sequel, sidequel, kung ano-ano pa, di ba? Nakakaloka. But anyway, filming will be beginning in London and Peru soon, and release date will be announced. Watch out for it. Magkakaroon kayong Paddington in the Philippines. Ang gagawin niya rito, kakaloka. <laughs> diba? Because, I mean, why Peru, right? Why Peru? But, yeah. Philippines is not far off. <laughs> Lady Gaga is in talk to join Joker to the musical sequel. Wow. Yup, yup, yup. With Joaquin Phoenix. Tagisa na ng talento ito. Yes. Last week, filmmaker Todd Phillips shared the title of the sequel, Joker, Folly ado, in reference to a medical term for identical mental disorder that affects two or more individuals in a family. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Lady Gaga will be playing Harley Quinn, a psychiatrist in Arkham Asylum, who falls in love with Joker and becomes his sidekick and partner in crime. But that's not all. Sources also told The Hollywood Reporter that the sequel will be a musical. What do you think about that? Ding, ding, ding! It did win the first one to Oscars, Best Score for Hilder Good Nadotir, and Best Actor for Joaquin Phoenix. Let's see what the second one will bring and how the treatment for the musical will be. But for now, for number seven, we're going to talk about this. Musical artist Joji. Ding, ding, ding. Yep. Joji released Glimpse of Us, and that is his first new music since his sophomore album, Nectar which came out back in 2020. Glimpse of Us, the stripped-down piano ballad about a tender and lovelorn remembrance of a past relationship. It's anchored by one of the most commanding choruses Joji has ever written and sung. Glimpse of Us is at once new but familiar, showcasing Joji's incredible vocal range and melancholic delivery. The, the, the drop of Glimpse of Us follows Joji's debut at the 2022 Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival, one of the weekend's most highly anticipated and talked about performances. So it's now streaming on all platforms, and we are giving you that here on Celebrity Top 10 to know more about Joji. But for number six, we're going to talk about the new album of this icon. <laughs> Christina Aguilera. For the past nine months, international artist Christina Aguilera has honored her Latin roots in the best possible way. She composed, produced, performed, and shared hit songs that are included in La Fuerza, 
her first CP in Spanish in her last 20 years of career. And the second EP titled La Tormenta, which was released yesterday on all digital platforms. Did you binge on it already? But to top it all off, Christina decided to release Aguilera, the surname album of her name is a direct way of honoring her Latina roots and family heritage, which are the source of pride and inspiration for much of her new music. It's out now on all digital platforms. But before we do move on, we do have a general reminder for everybody. Please watch us for 4 15 p.m. on One News. We have replays on 1 PH at 10. You can read up on Celebrity Top 10 on the One News website. That's onenews.ph. Hello to the All Anatics, the OMJ supporters. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for joining me last night. As I sat in on behalf of Jody Francisco for Sa Totoo Lang. Tonight we will have a guest. I, I know it's Raisa Sinon. And do catch us there. We are on Radio Cinco. I'm saying hi to the motorists. Kamusta kayo? Kamusta mga gas prices? Kinakaya pa ba? Kapit lang, mga kapatid. But anyway, yes, top five. Let's talk about you, Jackman. Well, the update about it is he did test positive. For COVID-19. Again. What? Yes. Marami yung ano, ha, second timers na kinala nagka COVID-19. Max Clayton will perform use role as Professor Harold Hill because Hugh Jackman will miss his performance in The Music Man after having tested again for the second time around. The result came in a day after his performance in the Tony Awards. So he did first test positive last December. Here's what Hugh Jackman has to say. I wanted you guys to hear it from me first that unfortunately this morning I have uh, frustratingly tested positive for COVID again. Um, <clears throat> so my incredible standby, Max Clayton, is going to go on for me. And Max and I have been working together on this show for over two years and on this part. And I can tell you from being in the room with him and from experience, he's absolutely extraordinary. So I'm just frustrated that I won't get to see him and cheer him on, but I will be cheering you on in my heart, Max, and to everyone, my whole cast at The Music Man. I, I hate not being there with you, but um, I'll be back as soon as I can. So this is just another reminder to me, and I'll say it a million times over, that the real heroes of Broadway are our standbys, our understudies and swings. And never has that been more obvious than in the past year. So they give meaning to the to the phrase, the show must go on, and it will go on, and it'll be amazing. Maxi Chookers, as we say in Australia, have the best time, and I'll be back at River City as soon as I can. Anyway, moving on to number four. Light year was banned in 14 countries due to same-sex kiss. <laughs> Honestly, I did see the film, and it's not a big deal. Yes, it is not a big deal at all. It was brief. It was natural. It it, it was part of the film and the storyline. I understand like here for not editing it for other markets because it's, it is how it is. It is how the world is right now. So good call, Disney. And Disney is firm that they will not edit it out or cut that scene from Lightyear where some main characters were uh, were kissing and they were of the same sex. The scene was that led them to get banned in 14 Middle Eastern and Asian countries, including China, a large movie market. So also same-sex relationship is depicted in the movie media content standards in the United, United Arab Emirates as homosexuality, which is considered criminal in Middle Eastern countries. I hope something will be done about this in other countries and they would move forward as well with the realities of the world. But I know also it's baby steps. We are still getting there. We do understand that as well. But yeah, you're going to miss Lightyear. But in the film, guys, just to talk about it, Buzz Lightyear is voiced by Chris Evans. He also, uh, he has a friend who married another woman and they had a brief kiss in the show. So like here officially opens today here in the Philippines. I'm sure it's going to do well, especially after this, right? Anyway, number three. Sponge Cola. Yes, they're dropping a new single. Let's talk about it. Filipino alternative rock outfit. Sponge Cola addresses the truth about regret and longing on their heart-wrenching single, Laman, ng Panaginip. 
That's released via Sony Music Philippines. Yup, the song is the fifth single released off their upcoming album, Classic. To be released sometime this year, the new record will serve as the band's eighth full-length album following a string of multi-platinum and critically acclaimed hits that span for more than two decades. Here what's but here's what Sponge Cola Frontman Yael Yuzon has to say about the song. I think it's because yun nga, yung subject matter is something very common sa mga Filipinos lalo na. Kasi if you listen to the lyrics, literally pinag-uusapan yung kapag inuna mo yung responsibilities mo, which is not a bad thing. Pero madalas mangyari yun eh, na parang meron kang, let's say, boyfriend or girlfriend sa from your hometown. Tapos kailangan mo mag-migrate para magtrabaho. Tapos pagbalik mo, makikita mo may, may asawa na siya, may anak na siya. Tapos ang gagawin mo, pupunta ka na lang sa video okay, tapos pe-play mo yung song, na para, song mo para sa kanya. Tapos pag kinanta mo, yung mga kaibigan mo nakatingin sa'yo na parang grabe. Ito talaga yung masterpiece mo ah. Parang piyesang-piyesa. Tapos parang, oo oh nga, no look. Hindi nakatingin sa lyrics. Hindi talaga eh. Bakit? Kasi yung lyrics nandito na eh. Nandito na sa heart. Yep, yep. But for number two, here is our topic. Super Junior. Super Junior. They release a new trailer for the new album. And yep, they are back as a group and about to release The Road Keep Ongoing. In a trailer release, a K-pop group is in geometric visuals with fast-paced cuts. More details about the latest comeback are yet to be announced. And currently, Super Junior has nine active members. But, well, if Super Junior is back, number one, you know the topic. You know it, you expect it, especially if you're an ARMY. It is BDS announcing their hiatus. We are not shocked about this. They have been overworked. Come on. But yes, Army Kapit lang because they are still, well, they are on a hiatus as a group, but individually they will be exploring their uh, talents and careers, right? So that, that's what they announced last night, late last night. Yes, it happened during the Festa dinner where the group looked back on their journey and the direction they are taking in. RM revealed that they have to accept that the group changed and after releasing hit songs, he didn't know what kind of group they were anymore, what kind of story they wanted to tell. Actually, that's really true. And I commend BTS for bringing us on their journey realizing that because they're human beings. <laughs> Sobrang saludo ako sa kanila for doing that because us in our lives, even us as individuals, we go through things like this and it is very intimate of them that even though they have millions and millions of fans in a massive scale they are really walking us through wh where they are as a talent right as a unit so good luck bds yup and with that bds just released their compilation this proof in a single yet to come the most beautiful moment and i'm sure that means that they're the most beautiful moment is yet to come for the group See you again, BDS. Hopefully soon. Palapakan natin sila. Anyway, guys, please get boosted. Tumataas na naman yung cases. Let's keep it at bay, people. Get boosted, get boosted, get boosted. Wear a mask, disinfect as well. See you guys tomorrow, mga kapatid. Bakalis sa mga countdown Mondays to Fridays, 4.15 p.m. on One News. Replays at 10 on One PH. I'm MJ Marfori. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow, Thursday. This is Celebrity Top 10.